Keeping track of software across thousands of devices is complicated. This is where request automation can help. Hi, Matt Barron, Product Specialist at Invigate here. Invigate Service Desk will give you the self-service portal for your requests, and Insight will help you manage the software licenses your teams use. So, let's build it. To get started, I'm going to create a workflow in Service Desk. How you build this workflow and request item is up to you and your environment. You may need to have a list of applications that users can request, or maybe you need individual uh, request items for each application. You might need to leave something on there like an open text field, or even create a workflow for specific applications that require permissions uh, or have role-based access. So do what works for your teams, test it out and make adjustments before going live. You're gonna wanna get this right because application requests are very popular requests from IT. So you wanna make sure you get this right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a workflow. I'm going into settings and I'm gonna click on workflows. So this new workflow is basically going to be our form for our request. And you can see start at end here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight to the start, double click, and this is where you're gonna collect the information that you need. So first I'm gonna fill in an application request as the name of the workflow. And then I'm also going to check and make sure that these are all set properly, that the customer can start the workflow, that there is a subject that is required, a uh, description if you need it, and then who's responsible. But for right now, I'm gonna create two fields specifically. Uh, the first one is going to be the user, so I want to know who is this requested for. And we're just going to write a simple description here. Please select the person. Uh, now I'm going to do another field, and this one is going to be a selection field, so I want to make sure that people can choose the application that they want. So for this, we're going to choose a list, and I think we're going to change it so that you can select multiple applications. Now, like I said, this has to be set up for the way that it's gonna work for your environment. Um, if you want each request to have one install for each one, then maybe that's how you do it. Or like I said, you could have a specific request for each application. Please select the application to be installed. And now we're gonna look at our list. It has nothing in it right now. So now we're just gonna add in our applications. Now we're a Microsoft shop, so I'm gonna put in tons of those real quick. There. Now that I have a list of the applications that users can request, I'm gonna hit save. And now we've got the two fields that people need in order to properly request software. So now if we go back to our design of our workflow, all we really have is the beginning and we're going to select the line between the two points. We're gonna add a node there. And this node is going to be uh, the approval mechanism. So this is where we're gonna to go to the manager for approval. So I'm gonna double click on this and we're gonna click on approval. And we're just gonna say, please approve the application request for your team member. And we're going to choose the manager, customer's manager in this case and the approval will expire after two days of working time. And if they don't approve it, we're gonna accept it by default and then uh, no pause SLA because we want that um, to, to be measured appropriately. I'm gonna add these fields to the approval so that they can see who it's requested for and what applications they're requesting. And now the approval step is done. I'm just gonna save this real quick so I've got a saved version of our workflow. Now, I didn't add a label here, so let's just add that real quick. We'll say manager's approval. And now we need a stage gate because we need to determine if there isn't an approval uh, or if they're rejected, then we need to throw that out. Um, and if they did approve it, then we need some tasks to get it installed. So I'm just gonna click on this add conditional and this is gonna add that uh, decision point in our workflow here. So this is going to be whether the uh, manager approved it or not. We're just gonna say approved. 
And if they do approve it, then we're going to go to a new task, which we're going to call, or I'm just going to say install tasks. We're going to click on this and we're going to actually set up the tasks to install the software. Uh, so we're going to switch this out to application support. So that's who's responsible. Uh, and I think, yep, this is perfect. So the team specifically and not a specific person. And uh, these are the tasks. So uh, we're going to allow users to create tasks during the workflow execution, including the ones that were created so that they can add ad hoc tasks if they'd like. Like for instance, if we need to order another license, um, they can put that task on there and assign it out to John, our application administrator. We don't want the tasks to be visible to end users because they don't care. Uh, optional tasks allows the workflow to proceed to the next stage without the need to complete all the tasks. And we do actually want agents following all these tasks. Um, and then you can make it so that if there's multiple stages of a workflow, that the undone tasks copy to the next stage. But obviously this is really just a one and done thing. There is no multiple steps uh, in this workflow. So we're just going to leave that and we're going to create the tasks down here. So the first task is to validate license availability. And we're going to give that to no one. That's going to automatically go to this application support team because they will be the first ones to get this task. And then we're going to, uh, after it's available, we're going to have them just uh, do the configuration. So add user to the correct active directory group to install the software. And then we're just going to do one last task to validate software is either installing or completed installation. And this gives the onus to the end or to the agents to check to make sure that the software is installed instead of asking our customers to do that. So we're going to give them uh, one day for each of these because it really should just be one day turnaround. And now we're going to save. Now we'll go back to our design. And you can see we kind of got our approval. We've got our install task. We've got this gate in between that's going to determine whether it was approved or not. Now we need to actually put that all together. So I'm going to double click on this stage gate and that's going to say, hey, there are no events in this condition. You need to add some. Um, so at this point, I'm going to go back to the design and I'm actually going to create a third line. So this is a jump. So this is going to create a, a conditional leap. I'm going to click on that and it's going to say select the stage to jump to. We're just going to say install tasks. Now we're going to go into this and we're going to configure the path rules specifically. So the install tasks only happen when the manager's approval was approved. Safe. Now there's lots of different ways that you could do this. You could add uh, another step in here. You could actually put in uh, a communication. So now that I've arranged everything and it looks really good, at this point, I would actually publish this workflow. So I'm gonna hit save. We're gonna go back to the workflow screen, which is gonna show us all our workflows. And you see the application request workflow here. We just need to deploy these changes. So this is part of our software where we make it so that you can have multiple workflows and the things that are in flow already don't necessarily move to this new workflow because they're already in progress. This is how you can have multiple workflows deployed at once. So now I'm gonna deploy those changes. We'll click on deploy and our workflow is published. Next, we'll create the application request. This step is quite easy as the form and workflow is already completed. So we just need to create the request item, add an icon and description. We'll go to catalog, collapse all, request something, and in here I'm gonna create a new category called application software request. We're going to change the icon for this to be an arrow down as if we're downloading software. And we're just gonna put an a, a description here. And we're gonna add in some keywords so that when people search for things like app or software or all the things that people would search for to find this item. 
I am actually going to feature this item because it is a popular request. We're going to make the parent in the catalog just request something. And then we switch this assign to from a help desk to workflow. And this is where we're going to find our application request workflow. And we're going to set in our types. Both of these, no matter what, is going to be a service request. There's no question that when you're requesting software, it's a service request. Okay, looking through options here, I don't think that I need to set any of these, but looking through here real quick, I just see one visibility rule. I actually need to select these other ones so that the end user can see this. I'm gonna hit save. Obviously you might have different visibility rules configured for your instance, so, you know, work with it, test it, make sure it's working, make sure people can see it. So I'm gonna do that right now by logging out of at my administrator account. We're just going to log in as a test user. I've got Nancy configured in here as a test user. Now Nancy's going to go in here and she can say new request. Um, she can say request something and there we've got the application software request or it's on my homepage. I can actually see it down here as a featured item. We'll do that application software request and now it's going to bring us through the workflow. So at this point it's asking for who is this requested for um, and I'm going to put in me because obviously I want it for me. And the application I'm going to be requesting today is Adobe Acrobat Document Cloud. We'll hit apply and let's, uh, let's do multiple just to make sure that that works too. We'll hit Photoshop as well. Um, I didn't ask for a description category. I think I would actually add that back here so that people can provide uh, more notes if they'd like. But at this point, I'm just going to click on start request. This will actually kick off the request and you can see right away that it's gone to my manager and that they've got two days for this to be approved before it gets denied. If I click here, I can see who my manager is. Oh, it's Daniela. So Danny's got to approve this before I can get anywhere. I can see everything on the ticket that's happened so far. Now let's log in as Danny and get this approved. So I'm gonna log out. We'll log in as Daniela. And now Daniela is going to get an approval right here that says, please approve this application request for your team member. If I want to see what application or what team member I can go right into it, it's going to list, hey, it's for Nancy. This is Adobe, Photoshop and Acrobat. I'm just going to accept this. Now you can see that there will be lots of other things you could do here. Add in pricing, let them know how much it's going to cost. Let them know it's going to hit their budget. Um, all, all those things that you could do to change this experience. At this point though, I'm gonna log out of Danny and we're gonna go take a look at the agent's view. So I'll log in as Pete and I'm gonna go into the specific request under my work and I think it'll be assigned already. So yes, I do need to find it. I'm gonna just find Nancy here real quick and that's gonna show me all of her requests in one spot. Uh, so here I can see that un, uh, unassigned application request. I I think this is the right one because it updated a few seconds ago. Right away, I can see that this is the correct one. If I scroll down here, I can actually see the approval. I can see what she's requesting. Um, at this point, I'm going to go through my task list and check the license availability for uh, Adobe Acrobat DC. So now I'm going to check our contract for Adobe specifically. I'm going to go to contracts within Insight. And now I'm going to go to Acrobat for Teams because this is where our Acrobat licenses are made uh, available. And as you can see, we have 10 licenses and 10 are assigned. So we have none available. If I go through this list real quick, I'm just gonna make sure Nancy's on here. She is. So she is a licensed user already of Adobe Acrobat. So I can actually just push this. I'm gonna add her to the group in Active Directory, but I validated the licenses now I can add her to the group and I'm going to actually log into SCCM and watch this to make sure that the package gets deployed. And once I can validate that it has been deployed, I'm going to hit yes. And this is actually going to close the request for us. The entire request has been completed now and there's no need for me to take any further action uh, at all. But if I do want to, I can let Nancy know that this has been completed. In order to do this, I'm going to actually use a canned response real quick to just do this final resolution and just let her know this has been completed. Thank you. Here's our extension and reply. 
That way Nancy does get a notification from me specifically knowing that Pete took care of her ticket today. Now the application has been installed and now in the Gate Insight, the agent on Nancy's computer is going to detect those applications and we can track to make sure that those applications stay installed and that her license is um, associated to her correctly. For more on that subject, check out our video on managing software licenses in Invigate Insight. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again soon. For more on this topic, check out our YouTube and remember, good service is good business.